Good day, it's Catherine here from Inky Finger Cat. Um, I'm going to make some cards using the new, well I'm saying new, I've had it for probably a week and a bit, but I've not had a chance to even look at it. Um, paper kit came with making cards and paper craft magazine, so again, not looked through the magazine yet. Ooh, pretty, pretty flowers. So I'm going to make some pretty cards, probably uh, obviously going to bring in some sentiments of some kind, maybe some stamps to do some backgrounds, but basically I'm going to make some cards. So a little bit like a little while ago I did the 10 cards, one kit kind of uh, video. Don't know how many cards I'm going to make, I'm just going to have a play. And I thought I'd stick it, the video on and you could see what I do. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you at the other end. Okay, so I've decided to do it as a voiceover rather than just give you some music to listen to. Um, so, card number one. I took the first page, which had these beautiful red-themed blooms, and decided to fussy cut the one that's sort of on a bit of a curve. So, although I did fussy cut this one all on camera, um. I'm not going to do that with the rest of them, so you, you don't get to watch me cut out continuously. Um, what I did then was find some paper that I thought went with it, same colour scheme, and cut that to a panel that I knew would fit on a A6 card. Um, at this point I'm umming and ahhing, and I think that I'm going to use this frame, but actually it's too many flowers, so no, that's not going to work. So then I have a little fiddle through and find this green striped paper and decide a little strip of green striped paper will work perfectly at breaking up that pattern so that I can see a little bit more of the flowers that are going to be on the top. So at this point I managed to pretty much break my ATG um, and I go to use it and think, no, nah, this isn't happening. And I can't be bothered fixing it now, so I'll put it to one side and just grab my normal double-sided tape, which is what I use, along with a couple of different kinds of glues to adhere most of the cards. So, there you go, little panel cut down. I then decide I want to have a circle, so I die-cut a circle from white cardstock, and it's a linen cardstock. And then I chose from watercolour words this sentiment just for you. I decided that I'm going to heat emboss it, so I think probably for the only time in this video I actually remembered my anti-static powder tool um, and I grabbed some emerald green um, embossing powder. I heat it and then think, oh I just want it looking a little bit thicker, a bit juicier, so I think I'll pour that over, oops, and of course I create a little bit of a speckly mess, but do you know what? It really doesn't matter when it comes to the final card. So now I just need to adhere them together. So at this point I'm using the collage uh, glue stick from Ranger. And I'm going to use tape for the back of the circle to stick that down. So nearly all of these, in fact no, all of these cards are going to be A6 size. So the way I usually create A6 cards, if I don't have card blanks already is to take a piece of A4, as so, and cut it down at 10.5 centimetres, and then score it, and then I have a top folding uh, tent card. Now this panel, I wanted it to be just a tiny bit smaller, but I wanted those little bits to sort of peep over the edges. So I ended up using my scissors just on the final bit. And the reason I don't use this kind of tape more often is because it does take a bit of fiddling sometimes to get the backs off. Now I figured I wanted some sequins so I decided on white sequins for this. I haven't got any red or orangey pink ones which would have worked nicely as well but I've decided white works perfectly fine for this and I use my Anita's um, glossy glue pen which is a bit like glossy accents um, in order to do that. So we're on to card number two. As I said, I'm not going to make you fussy, see me fussy cut all of these. So this is the purple one and I chose the purple stripe background to make the main panel. 
which is really pretty and works perfectly. But I needed something to break it up a little bit, so I used some white cardstock and cut it with a deckle edged uh, die, and then used some pink cardstock and cut a frame using the same deckle edged dies to build it up. And now I'm just going to adhere these all together. So I'm using a mixture of that collage glue, pe uh, glue tip stick sorry, and the tape. And now I'm just going to add that to the card. So that pink cardstock, it's the same pink cardstock as the frame, it's going to sit on top. Now on the camera, I must admit this looks a little bit weird as a colour combo, but in real life it doesn't look half as bad. However, when I did my sentiment, uh, which I forgot to film, I did end up with a little bit of purple on that corner, so I've just cut another little embellishment out. And you might have noticed I also used my Wink of Stella glue pen in order to um, colour in each of the flowers so that they've got a nice bit of sparkle on them. And we're on to card number three. And this is a more elongated um, panel, uh, a panel cluster of flowers, and I thought it worked really well with the rectangle shape. So I decided on... Um, a white rectangle and then I would wanted a pale pink card base but in order to make that match a little bit more I felt that white panel needed a bit of pink as an edge so I'm just chopping things I tend to chop slightly off camera just because of the way that the um, oh what's it called the paper trimmer fits on my desk I don't have a particularly deep desk so right at the top of this screen which you can't see is a pen part with various bits and pieces in it uh, and that's pretty much the edge of my desk so it does always seem to cut just slightly off camera right this time i'm using um, a liquid tacky glue in a an applicator a fine tip nozzle applicator bottle and i'm gonna and i added that to the panel and then again using my tape for the back of this piece um, I'm going to stick it down onto the card blank. Now, I want some sequins, but this time I choose pink in order to complement that pink that's going on. Now, what happens? Oh no, not at this point, sorry. Something else happens later. Uh, and now I need to choose a sentiment, and this time I've done it from the watercolour wings, and it's the just for you sentiment. I'm sorry, I forgot to say the sentiment from the second one, I think, was petal palette. Yeah, petal palette. So again, took that pink cardstock uh, and used Versafine, and this time I'm just hand cutting the little sentiment uh, to stick it over the top. And then I'm going to glue all those little sequins down. I always choose sort of a, a an odd number of embellishments when I th choose things like sequins or. Um, card candy or whatever so in that case it was five now this time I'm going to take that yellow circle one and I'm going to die cut it and I should have probably pressed pause on the camera so it doesn't just show an empty screen um, and then I also take some yellow cardstock and die cut a larger circle um, and this is just random cardstock from my stash most of the rest of the cardstock I use is Stampin' Up! cardstock. I love the colours. So I decide that this needs, uh, again, that green stripy cardstock as the back panel. So there we go. And now I'm umming and ahhing about positioning and whether I actually want some more flowers on it. And I decide I quite like this little sort of posy type one so again I die cut uh, I fussy cut this out for all of the fussy cutting because they're so fine I do um, leave a white border okay so I've decided I'm going to position it just off center so that it's actually going to be off the edge and then I'm going to trim it down so it's still back to the panel 
and then I want that little cluster but I've decided I want the cluster to be um, raised up so I've used the foam tabs I use quite a lot of foam tabs on this uh, and there's quite a lot of little delicate pieces so there's a couple that I chop into half um, and then obviously it takes a little while to take all the backing off what I really could do with is some foam strips rather than just or foam tape rather than just the little tabs at this point I realised what I should have probably done is do the sentiment never mind so I'm going to back this onto the dark dark green cardstock I think it's Emerald Envy this card could be Tranquil Tide I'm not sure I think it's Tranquil Tide actually but it works perfectly with that green stripe and the dark green of the leaves so as I say, at this point, I think, oh, should have done the sentiment first. So I try my Butterfly Basics and I'm going to stamp this using the Versafine. And I just have to lift one of the little flower bits out of the way so that I can do that. And I take some yellow sequins, this time just three. And this point, I have a small disaster. So in trying to tidy up all the sequins, I actually managed to get them all over the floor, all over the desk, all over my apron, everywhere. Um, so I have to do a little bit of a tidy up and a pick up of all the sequins and this time it works and they're all back in the pot. So you see, little crafting disasters, always fun. All right, on to the fifth card, which turns out to be the final card for this video. I really loved this vibrant and busy background. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I decide I want that cluster of flowers, but obviously they just completely disappear into the background. So I die cut a rounded rectangle out of the cardstock and I put that pink cardstock behind it. Now I must admit, if I was to do this again, wouldn't do that, I'd just use white. Um, but I then die cut another rounded rectangle in white, uh, slightly smaller, and add that. So I'm going to add that using foam tape. Uh, and you might have noticed I use an adhesive eraser to get rid of the gluey bits that were on my um, pad. And then I'm umming and ahhing about what kind of cardstock to put it on. Because at first I thought I was going to put it more onto that pink, but I changed my mind chose my corner rounder to keep with the rounded corner re rectangle theme and I chose a white card blank uh, well white card stock to make my card blank and that looks really pretty but I realize it's not quite straight so I have a little fiddle apologies for the wobbly camera as well and then adhere it to the card blank so now it needs a sentiment and it needs something that's going to pop. Oh, sorry, I've also chosen some white sequins. So I'm going to get those and stick those down. But yeah, it needs a sentiment. And um, I decide to use the smallest of the rounded rectangle dies um, to create the sentiment. So then I just needed a sentiment that would fit in that. And they're just for you. Uh, works perfectly which is from the butterfly basics because I've used Versafine and make sure I've heat heat set it to make sure it's not going to smudge and then when I die cut it out again I'm going to use the foam tabs to pop that up probably going to repeat most of what I've just said in a second for the bit that I did with the camera rolling okay so not necessarily in the right order as in the order I made them but this one, I um, ended up with a little spot, which is why I've ended up with an extra little bit up here, but I think that looks really pretty anyway. So for all of the cards, pretty much, I've cut out the floral features, leaving a little bit of a white edge, because I'm not going to fussy cut these perfectly ever, because they've got really fine lines and stuff on them. For this one, use the purple stripy background, and then just to create a bit of a frame, I did a white panel and then this frame using a, a deck ledge set I've had for donkey's years and I very rarely used, uh, so that was quite nice. Um, I did deck ledging on the edge of the uh, 
banner as well not as keen on that now that I've done it but never mind sentiment I heat embossed over the top of the distress ink um, and then I've added Wink of Stella which hopefully you can see some of the shine it's really difficult on camera to catch the shine but they're really sparkly and really pretty uh, and then just grab some pink cardstock for the base uh, that's the same pink as that frame so that's that one this one I die cut out the circular frame uh, what I should have done then was stamped and maybe embossed the sentiment, but never mind. Did that at the end instead. Uh, I also die cut a circle that was bigger to frame it out of some yellow cardstock. Used the green stripey background for the base. And then this panel I again fussy cut out. Um, really pretty. And I quite like the fact that that's a different shape. To, to the others they're all quite clustered but this is kind of quite a vertical shape so I quite like that one this one was the first one I made and I didn't make a brilliant job of the heat embossing but never mind I quite like the fact that it's a bit speckly now now it's all dried uh, again fussy cut that then decided on a die cut circle use this as the backing and then just to break it up added that border of the green uh, so quite pretty uh, and quite a lot of these I've added sequins too. So yeah, that one's got some yellow sequins. This one's got some white sequins. This one's got pink sequins. So this one chose pale pink to contrast the blue. Now this is quite a long um, little cluster. So I decided to exaggerate that and make it into an elongated panel using the um, cardstock underneath. Then use the same uh, colour for the background. Uh, again, as I said, pink for the accent, for the um, sequins. Now this one's quite a raised one. Um, I really like this really vibrant background paper, but it was very busy. And certainly you couldn't see this on top of it. So what I decided to do was to die cut out a panel. Behind that, I put the pink cardstock. I think if I was to do this again, I'd just use it as a white cardstock. But then I put the white cardstock panel as well, uh, raised that onto the uh, foam tabs and stuck the, the cluster onto that. Same for this little um, panel was die cut using the same set of dies as this, sort of a, st a stitched uh, rounded rectangle die. And then some white sequins onto that so really pretty really vibrant and i have got so much stuff left so that was five cards uh, and all i've done is add a little bit of cardstock and some um sequins that's the only supplies i've used uh used up of my own stash there so i've got quite a lot of full sheets left so there's one two three four five six full sheets left of background papers and um, I've then got so many still of the clusters of the beautiful watercolored flowers I mean that is just stunning but I'm not entirely sure when I'd use that um, so I've hardly used any of them really there's so many left and that's such a pretty one and then loads of little bits and pieces of, oh, there's another bit, uh, of background left as well. So I've, I've hardly used any really. Um, and yet I've made five cards. So I'm going to call it a day there today because I think that'll be a long enough video. I'm not sure how long I've gone for, but I've gone for quite a while. I know that much. Uh, so even speeding it up, this will be quite a long video. Um, but obviously I've got so many more things that I can make from this kit so what do I do now normally I then chop this up into pieces ready to make some cards again in the future um, I'm gonna actually have a little break and go and have a cup of tea um, before I do that but yeah that's what I normally do is chop it up and then put them all together in a poly pocket so that they're easy to grab and do as a um, something on the run or something that I can just do as and when I've also I'm doing my index card a day challenge at the moment so I have a feeling that some of those will make 
will make features on some index cards at some point soon because they are so pretty. What I try not to do is hoard these. But having said that, I've got quite a few sets that are uh, waiting to be used or are half used at the moment. But I do try to get through them and use them as quickly as I possibly can because there's not really enough room to be just keeping hold of these things. So you'll probably see some more projects over on the blog at some point in the near future. But for now, if you did enjoy that, please don't forget to give me a like. It helps me and YouTube know that you like what you're seeing. And if you want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe. But until next time, bye.